After Warren and Jess became the leader, he started calling up the fathers and saying, God told me your child's ready when they were 12. I, I just don't think that what I went through was anything less than cult violence. I think it was more abuse, honestly. Warren Jess had 79 wives when he went to prison. I was number 65 of Warren Jess' wives. I'm Brielle Decker. I was born and raised in the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the FLDS, is a, a, it's like a branch off of the mainstream LDS Church, the mainstream Latter-day Saint Church. The F stands for Fundamentalist. So... They believe in polygamy. They have like, they have, that's their main difference between the LDS and the FLDS is polygamy. Um, I was born and raised into this. One of the biggest impacts um, being raised in the FLDS had was um, the isolation. Well, isolation from the outside world. We couldn't watch TV most of the time. Like, up until I was nine years old, I got to watch Disney shows, but then they said no more. So like, I didn't have a lot of exposure to the outside world, not compared to most children. I think I'll be learning basic things for the rest of my life. That's what I feel like, you know, coming out here and almost every day, it feels like I learn something about like, it's the first time I've done this, first time I've done this. There's big ones. Like the first time I saw my, the ocean was with my new husband and, um, we went on our honeymoon was to see the ocean for the first time because um, we couldn't travel without permission. Being raised in the FLDS, a big thing for us was arranged marriages. We call them appointed marriages. Um, basically, the leader had the ultimate say in every wedding. Um, so my parents were actually in arranged marriage. They were pulled aside of church. They were told that they could say yes or no at the ceremony. There was going to be a wedding. It's going to be their wedding. They could say yes or no at the ceremony, but they had never met each other. So um, they just said yes, because it became a matter of trust in their leaders. I was born as their 11th child of 14. Before Warren and Jess became the leader, the fathers had a little bit more say in the children's lives. They would tell the, they would kind of just write a letter and, and tell the prophet that they felt like their child was of age and could now get married. And most fathers, not most, but a lot of fathers would wait until they were 18. My father would. Well, after Warren Jess became the leader, he started calling up the fathers and saying, God told me your child's ready when they were 12. So it put the fathers in a really tight position because if they said no to their leader, their daughter isn't ready, then he could take away all of their daughters. If he said, yes, my daughter's ready, then she, the one daughter would go and get married and maybe have children and all that at 12 years old. So the right decision in that setting was to leave the church, but most of the fathers didn't recognize that. Warren just had 79 wives when he went to prison, according to some people that went through all the records in Texas. Um, he, There is speculation and most likely true that he's had spiritual wives even since he went to prison. I was number 65 of Warren Jeff's wives. We didn't know prior to the wedding who exactly I was going to marry. They don't even tell the parents until after you're in front of the leader and he kind of confirms. I was making dinner and my father walked in the room and he told me we needed to go on a drive. So my father walked in the room behind me and my mother screamed, no. And I turned around and my father's face was all red. He said, we need to go on a drive. And that was the same kind of setting that we had heard about other girls in the community at that time. So I walked out with him. I didn't grab my wedding dress. I didn't ask any questions. My mother wasn't invited. Um, when I got in the car, I noticed he was crying. My father was crying. Um, he didn't have a lot of say. You can see like there wasn't a lot of choice in the situation. If he was to say no, even if I was 18 and he was to tell Warren Jeffs that, no, who was the leader by the time I turned 18 years old, no, he would have lost all of my siblings and my mother's. So he didn't question, he just felt trapped. Um, but I was 18 and it was a little better for him. When I went up to 
the place that where Warren Jeffs was, then we were confirmed that it was Warren Jeffs that I was going, you know, that I was, he wanted to marry me. So that was a, a, a hard position for me to be in because I, I was scared of him. And um, a lot of people in the community think that every girl that goes out there, they're raised to believe that he's the best. He's like God to the people. He's a prophet. He's the only one that can receive new revelation. It's supposed to be this great honor. But I had a sister that had already gone into his family, and I was actually terrified of this day. I didn't dare say no to him, though, because I knew the punishment for saying no to him after he told me that what he wanted. In the end, it came down to I didn't dare say no to him. And if I had said no to him, there's a good chance that I would have never got married. I would have just been left in my father's family, or I could have even got kicked out of the church over that serious of a decision after he tells me. So I didn't want to do that. Kicked out of the church meant an apostate, somebody who can't associate with their family for who knows how long, unless their family members also become apostates. That's really the only time they can ever communicate. Yeah, Warren Jeffs, um, he was my principal in school. In, as a child. His first wife was my first grade teacher. So I was pretty raised in not only isolation, but also Warren Jeff's isolation. We were probably more conditioned to do what he wanted faster. We knew more of the repercussions. Um, if we didn't, that was just, I think it was more abuse, honestly. I, I just don't think that um, that what I went through was anything less than cult violence. Warren Jeffs, in his trainings, he he definitely lays it out as persuasion through love. He's very different in his trainings than he is actually in real life. He's very entitled in real life. Like most of the people in the community only know him by his trainings. They never had very many interactions, if any interactions with him personally. He's actually very mean. He's, he, he'll find out what you want. He'll act really nice about it. He'll be like, what do you like? What do you want? And he'll hold it just outside of your reach and tell you every single day, if you just do this thing, and if you just do this thing, and, and he'll actually never give it to you in a lot of cases. So to me, that's me. And they also don't believe that his charges were real. They think they were fabricated. Um, but I have personal experiences with Warren, so I know they're real. But they won't believe me over him because of their raising. He's the one that's like, God, I became an apostate. At the time he was put in prison, I was still trapped in there. So I wanted to testify against him, but there was no way for me. I wasn't even on the radar. Nobody knew where to find me. Eventually, I was locked in solitary confinement in Colorado City. I unscrewed the screws in the window. Um, one screw I unscrewed, one screw I broke off. Um, and I climbed out the window and ran, took back roads because I'd been caught on the roads trying to escape several times. I believe it was the last time. I believe if I would have been brought back even one more time, I would have never seen freedom like I've been able to enjoy um, because it worked that last time. I did have PTSD and I would have spaces of time where I needed more support. It's been about six years since I've been in the hospital for PTSD. And I've been out 11 years now. I did go after Warren Jeff's house. Um, I didn't get it through court, which most people think I was awarded his house through court, but I wasn't a legal wife. So that wouldn't have worked for me. Um, I did go through um, the landowners in the community and was awarded the house that way because they were also ex-FLDS people. So they were also apostates who um, knew that I was once Warren Jeff's wife. In 2017, in June, is when the recovery center that is currently here approached me. We had a meeting with the landowners and I and all of, all of us and made a plan to, to succeed at the recovery center that we originally proposed. So like in February the year before, I asked that we could call it the Dream House on the paperwork. They actually wrote the Dreaming House, but um, the people that came a year later that I had never heard of were the Dream Center. So the name of the recovery, it's a life recovery program 
is the Dream Center. The Dream Center is in Warren Jeff's old house. And I get to work with people that um, escape similar situations and help them start over in their lives to also learn how to function outside of isolation.